Structural Organization in Animals Topic 1, Animal Tissues Tissue All cells are well organized and coordinated to work in a group. A group of similar cells along with intercellular substances perform a specific function, such an organization is called tissue. The term tissue was introduced by Bishaw, and he is known as the father of animal histology. A tissue can also be defined as a group of one or more types of cells having a same origin and specialized for specific functions along with the intercellular materials. The intercellular materials or fluid forms the environment of the cell. The cell receives almost all the materials it requires from the intercellular fluid and transfer its waste materials again in this fluid. Note. The microscopic study of the tissues and organs in relation to their function is called histology. The term histology was coined by Mayer in 1819. The tissues arise from the undifferentiated cells of the primary germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, in an embryo, types of animal tissues. The structure of the cells vary according to their function. This variation in cells leads to the formation of following four types of tissues on the basis of their location and function. I. Epithelial 2. Connective. 3. Muscular 4. Neural. I. Epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue or epithelium, AP, upon, thele, nipple, covers both external and internal surfaces of the animal body. The epithelial tissue has a free surface, which faces either a body fluid or the outside environment and thus, provides a covering or a lining for some part of the body. Characteristics. The characteristic features of epithelial tissue are as follows. I. The cells are compactly arranged. 2. Intercellular spaces are narrow, 20 to 30 nanometers wide. 3. 3. Adjacent cells are held together by intercellular junctions. 4. The epithelial tissue lies on a thin, non-cellular basement membrane. V. Blood vessels are not present in the epithelial tissue. 6. Materials are exchanged by diffusion between epithelial cells and the blood vessels of the connective tissues across the basement membrane. 7. Nerve endings may penetrate the epithelial tissues. Junctions between epithelial cells. The common intercellular junctions may include tight junctions, gap junctions, desmosomes, intercellular bridges, and interdigitations. Tight junctions. The plasma membrane in the apical region of the adjacent epithelial cells become tightly packed together. These junctions check the flow of materials between the cells and are called occluding junctions. Adhering junctions. Facilitate the cementing process so as to keep the asterisk neighboring cells together. They include desmosomes and hemidesmosomes. Desmosomes. These are thick and strong junctions. They serve anchoring functions. Gap junctions. They are fine hydrophilic channels between adjacent cells formed with the help of protein cylinders called connexin. They help in chemical exchange between adjacent cells and hence are called communicating junctions. Types of epithelial tissues. The epithelial tissues are broadly classified into two groups, i.e., simple and compound. Simple epithelia. Simple epithelium is made up of a single layer of compactly arranged cells which rest over a non-cellular basement membrane. It occurs over moist surfaces where a little wear and tear occurs by friction. The simple epithelium is generally related with absorption, secretion, diffusion, and movement of materials. It is further subdivided into following types. I. Simple squamous epithelium. The squamous squama scale is formed of a single layer of closely fitted, flattened, polygonal cells, which forms bulges on the cell surface. The given cells are held together by various types of junctions, mainly tight junctions. The cells of squamous epithelium appear as tiles over a floor. They are also known as pavement epithelium. The squamous epithelium occurs in the alveoli of the lungs, Bowman's capsule, Henle's loop of uriniferous tubules, pericardial cavity, abdominal cavity, lining of various components of blood vascular system. Function simple squamous epithelium performs the function of protection, excretion, gas exchange and secretion of coelomic fluid. 2. Simple cuboidal epithelium. It is composed of a single layer of cube-like cells. The epithelium overlies on the basement membrane. Nucleus is rounded and placed centrally. The free surfaces of the cells may be smooth or bare microvilli. The microvilli increases the surface area of free ends of cells by many times. The simple cuboidal epithelium is commonly found in the ducts of glands, tubular parts of nephrons and kidneys, ovary seminiferous tubules of testes, etc. 
functions the main function of this epithelium is protection, secretion, absorption, excretion, and gamete formation. 3. Simple columnar epithelium. It is composed of a single layer of tall and slender cells. A single oval or elongated nucleus is situated near the base of the cell. Some of its cells produce mucus, called goblet cells. The simple columnar epithelium occurs in the lining of stomach, small and large intestine, digestive glands of stomach, intestine and pancreas, gallbladder, etc. The brush border columnar epithelium occurs in the gallbladder. The mucus secreting goblet cells are found in the lining layer of stomach, intestine, respiratory tract, etc. Functions The simple columnar epithelium helps in secretion, absorption and protection to the components of most glandular epithelia. 4. Simple ciliated epithelium. If the columnar or cuboidal cells bear cilia on their free surface they are called ciliated epithelium. They move particles or mucus in a specific direction over the epithelium. The epithelium lies over a basement membrane. The number of cilia varies in different cellular forms. In sensory cells of internal ear, a cilium accompanies number of stereocilia. This epithelium is of two types, i.e., ciliated columnar and ciliated cuboidal. A. Simple ciliated columnar epithelium It possess columnar cells that possess cilia over their free surface. It occurs in respiratory tract, fallopian tubes, parts of uterus and cervix, the different tubules of testes, etc. B. Simple ciliated cuboidal epithelium It is cuboidal or cubical cells that bear cilia on their free surface. It occurs in many parts of ependema of nervous system and parts of uriniferous tubules. Functions The epithelium maintains a flow of mucus, liquid or suspended particles constantly in one direction. In the oviducts, cilia helps in the movement of egg towards the uterus. In respiratory tract, cilia helps to push the mucus towards the pharynx. In nephrons of kidney, cilia keep the urine moving. In nervous system, cilia of the ventricles of the brain and central canal of the spinal cord helps in the circulation of cerebrospinal fluid. Pseudostratified epithelium. The epithelium is one cell thick, but appears two layered because all the cells do not reach the free surface. The cells are attached to the basement membranes, hence they are called pseudostratified. The mucus secreting goblet cells also occur in this epithelium. This epi epithelium is of two types. A. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium It is columnar cells without cilia. It lines the large ducts of certain glands, like parotid salivary glands, and the urethra of human male. B. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium It is columnar cells. The tall cells bear cilia at the free surfaces and the short cells are without cilia. The epithelium lines the trachea and large bronchi. The movements of its cilia push the mucus laden with dust particles and bacteria towards the larynx. Functions The pseudostratified epithelium helps in protection, movement of secretions from glands, urine and semen in urethra and mucus loaded with dust particles and bacteria in trachea. Compound epithelia The compound epithelium is made up of more than one layer of cells. They cover the surfaces where constant replacement of cells is required due to rapid wear and tear by friction. The compound epithelia are of two types, i.e., stratified and transitional. A. Stratified compound epithelia. The stratified epithelia consists of many layer of cells. On the basis of the shape of the cells present in the superficial layers, the stratified epithelia are of four types, A. Stratified squamous epithelium The cells in the basal, deepest, layer are columnar or cuboidal with oval nuclei. It is called germinative layer. The cells in this region divide by mitosis to form new cells. The stratified squamous epithelium is further subdivided as two main types, i.e., keratinized and non-keratinized. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium The cells of the outer few layers replace their cytoplasm with a hard waterproof protein called keratin or horn. This is called keratinization or cornification. These layers of flat, dead cells are called stratum corneum or homey layer. The head the heavy deposits of keratin in the dead superficial cells makes the epithelium impervious to water and highly resistant to mechanical abrasions. This epithelium forms the epidermis of the skin in land vertebrates. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium This epithelium does not have keratin and is unable to check water loss. It provides moderate protection against abrasion. It lines the buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus. Canal, lower part of urethra, vocal cord, vagina, cervix, lower part of uterus, conjunctiva, 
cornea of eye and inner surface of eyelids. B. Stratified cuboidal epithelium, it is outer layer of cuboidal cells and basal layer of columnar cells. It forms the epidermis of fishes and many uridials, tailed amphibians like salamanders. It also lines the sweat gland ducts and larger salivary and pancreatic ducts. C. Stratified columnar ciliated epithelium, its outer layer consists of ciliated columnar cells and basal layer of columnar cells. It lines the larynx and upper part of the soft palate. D. Stratified columnar epithelium, it consists of columnar cells in both superficial and basal layers. It covers the epiglottis and lines mammary gland ducts and parts of urethra. 2. Transitional compound epithelium. The epithelium consists of more than one layer of cells, but is much thinner and more stretchable than the stratified epithelium. It contains cuboidal cells at the base, two or three layers of large polygonal or pear-shaped cells in the middle, and a superficial layer of large, broad, rectangular, or oval cells. The transitional epithelium lines the inner surface of urinary bladder, ureter, and renal pelvis. They have thick membrane with thin regions that fold when the bladder contracts. 3. Glandular epithelium. Some of the columnar or cuboidal cells get specialized for secretion and forms the glandular epithelium. It is of two types. Unicell unicellular glandular epithelium. It consists of isolated glandular epithelial cells called intraepithelial cells, example, goblet cells of the alimentary canal or one such cell. U. Multicellular glandular epithelium. It consists of cluster of epithelial cells called extra epithelial cells. These cells unite to make up one gland, example, salivary gland. Gland. A cell, tissue or organ, which secretes some substance is called a gland. The secretions of glands may be protein, pancreas, lipids, adrenals, mixture of carbohydrates and proteins, salivary gland, or mixture of all the three materials, mammary glands. The glands can be classified in different types based on site of secretion, mode of secretiory, and involvement of single or many cells. Based on site of secretion. The glands can be exocrine, endocrine or heterocrine based on the site where the secretion is released. I. Exocrine glands These glands have ducts to pour their secretions to their site of action. They often secrete enzymes and its examples include salivary glands, intestinal glands, gastric glands, lacrimal or tear glands. B. Endocrine glands These glands do not have ducts and pour their secretions directly into the blood or lymph. These glands are also called ductless glands and their secretions are known as hormones. Some examples of endocrine glands are pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, etc. C. Heterocrine glands slash mixocrine glands These glands are partly exocrine and partly endocrine in function, example, pancreas, kidneys, stomach, gonads, intestine, placenta, etc. Based on number of cells. According to the number of cells forming the glands, they are unicellular and multicellular. A. Unicellular glands The mucus secreting goblet cells of the alimentary canal are called unicellular glands. B. B. Multicellular glands These are composed of many cells and are formed by sinking of the gland into the underlying connective tissue. The multicellular glands may be simple or compound glands. Asterisk simple glands These may be simple tubular glands, example, crypts of Lieberkuhn, simple coiled tubular glands, Sweat glands, and simple alveolar glands having flask-shaped secretory units, mucus secreting glands in the skin of frog. Compound glands These have branch system of ducts. These may be compound tubular glands, example, gastric glands of stomach, Brunner's glands of intestine, compound alveolar glands, example, some sebaceous glands and salivary glands, and compound tubuloalveolar glands having both tubular and alveolar secretory units, example, pancreas, functional mammary glands. Functions of epithelial tissue. The main functions of epithelial tissue are listed below. I. The epithelial tissue protects the underlying tissues from mechanical injury, entry of germs, harmful chemicals, and drying up. 2. It checks the absorption of harmful or unnecessary materials. 3. The epithelium of uriniferous tubules is specialized for urine excretion. 4. The sensory epithelia of sense organs help to receive various stimuli from the atmosphere and convey them to the brain. V. The epithelium of alveoli of the lungs brings about the exchange of gases between the blood and air. 6. The pigmented epithelium of the retina darkens the cavity of eyeball. 7. Epithelium also forms glands that secrete secretions such as mucus, gastric juice, and intestinal juice.
8. The germinal epithelium of the ovaries and seminiferous tubules of the testes produce ova and sperms, respectively. 9. Epithelium produces exoskeletal structures like scales, feathers, hair, nails, claws, horns and hoofs. X. Ciliated epithelia, example, of respir respiratory and genital tracts, serves to conduct the mucus and other fluids in the ducts they line. Note. The term epithelium was coined by Royce. Transitional epithelium. 2. Connective tissue. The connective tissues are most abundant and widely distributed in the body of complex animals. They are named as connective tissues because of their special function of linking and supporting other tissues slash organs of the body. Generally, connective tissue is made up of three components. 1. Matrix. It is a clear and viscous substance. Its consistency may vary from liquid, example, blood, to semi-solid, example, cartilage, and solid, e.g., bone, form. 2. Cells embedded in the matrix. These are responsible for secreting the matrix and other substances. The cells of connective tissue are of different types. I. Fibroblasts produce fibers and matrix. 2. Adipose cells store fat. 3. Plasma cells synthesize antibodies. These are also called cart will cells because thin chromatin in their nucleus forms four or five clumps giving the nucleus a resemblance of a cartwheel. 4. Mast cells produce histamine, heparin, and serotonin. These are related to basophils of the blood. A. Histamine dilates the walls of blood vessels in inflammatory and allergic reactions. B. Heparin checks clotting of blood inside the blood vessels. C. Serotonin acts as a vasoconstrictor to check bleeding and to increase the blood pressure. V. Mesenchyme cells produce various types of connective tissue cells. 6. Macrophages ingest cell debris, bacteria, and foreign matter. 7. Chromatophores, pigment cells, are found in the dermis of the skin which impart color to the animals. 8. Reticular cells form reticular tissue and are phagocytic in nature. 3. Fibers. These are non-living products of the cells. These are of three types. I. Collagen or collagenous fibers, white fibers, are made up of collagen protein. When boiled in the water, collagen changes into gelatin. 2. Elastic fibers, yellow fibers, are formed of a protein called elastin. These fibers are branched and elastic. 3. Reticular fibers are delicate, branched, and inelastic. They are made up of reticulin protein. They always form a network. Types of connective tissues. The connective tissues are mainly of following three types. 1. Loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue has cells and fibers loosely arranged in a semi-fluid ground substance. These tissues are of two types, i.e., areolar tissues and adipose tissue. Areolar tissue. It is found under the epithelial tissue of the skin, visceral organs like stomach, trachea, and the walls of the blood vessels, etc. Its matrix is made up of glycoproteins. It contains two types of fibers, i.e., the white collagen fibers made up of collagen and the yellow elastic fibers made up of elastin. The different cells of areolar tissue are fibrocytes, macrophages, and mast cells. Functions the tensile strength of collagen fibers and the elasticity of the yellow fibers protect the various organs from mechanical injuries. This tissue also provides rapid diffusion of the materials and migration of wandering cells towards the areas of infection and repair. Adipose tissue. It is a modified type of areolar tissue. Its matrix contains large number of adipose cells along with fibrocytes and macrophages. White and yellow fibers are present in the matrix. The cells of this tissue are specialized to store fats. The excess of nutrients which are not used immediately are converted into fats and are stored in this tissue. The adipose tissues are found in the subcutaneous region, around the heart, kidneys, eyeballs, etc. Example, it is also found in the blubber of whales and elephants, hump of camel, fat bodies of frog and yellow bone marrow. Func functions the adipose tissue is mainly a food reserve or fat depot for storage. It forms a shock-absorbing cushion around the eyeballs and kidneys. The tissue also helps in the production of blood corpuscles. 2. Dense connective tissue. Fibers and fibroblasts are found compactly packed in the dense connective tissues. This tissue is of two types i.e., dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. I. Dense regular connective tissue. In this tissue, the collagen fibers are present in rows between many parallel bundles of fibers. It is further of two types. 
It mainly consists of white fibers arranged in bundles. The fibroblasts are present in rows between the bundles. It is of two types. Tendons The white fibrous connective tissue forms the cords called tendons. These join the skeletal muscles with the bones. Sheets The white fibrous connective tissue also forms flat plates or sheets. It occurs in the dermis of the skin, periosteum of the bone, perichondrium of phi 8 711 dense re 9 euler cartilage, pericardium of heart, etc. The white fibrous connective tissue has great strength, however, its flexibility is limited. It mainly consists of yellow elastic fibers. The fibers are thicker. The fibroblasts and a few white fibers are found in between the yellow fibers. It is also of two types. Ligaments The yellow elastic connective tissue forms the cords called ligaments. These join bones to bones. Sheets The yellow fibrous sheets formed by this tissue occur in the walls of blood vessels, lungs and bronchioles, true vocal cords, cartilage of larynx, trachea etc. The yellow elastic connective tissue has considerable strength and remarkable elasticity. Thus, it allows the stretching of various organs. Dense irregular connective tissue. It has fibroblasts and many fibers, mostly collagen, that are oriented in different pattern. This tissue is present in the skin. Collagen fibers. 3. Specialized connective tissues. The specialized connective tissues are of following types. Skeletal tissues. These, these tissues form the endoskeleton of the vertebrates. They form a rigid framework which supports the body, protects the vital organs, and helps in locomotion. The two types of skeletal tissues, i.e., cartilage and bone. A. Cartilage. It is a tough, semi-transparent, elastic and flexible tissue. The cartilage cells lie in groups of two to three in fluid-filled spaces called lacunae. The cartilage is bounded externally by a stiff sheath called perichondrium containing white fibrous tissue. The cartilages are of three types, i.e. hyaline, fibrous, and calcified. Hyaline cartilage it has a clear, translucent, bluish-green matrix. It is flexible and forms articular surfaces at the joints of long bones, where it is called articular cartilage. Fibrous cartilage it has well-developed fibers in the matrix. It is of two types i.e., white fibrous cartilage and yellow elastic cartilage. It is a hard and rigid connective tissue. These are non-pliable ground substance rich in calcium salts and collagen fibers providing strength to the bone. The cells of bone are found in a calcified matrix made up of osseum. The bone cells known as osteocytes lodged in the spaces called lacunae. They also interact with skeletal muscles attached to them to bring about movements. The bone consists of four parts, i.e. Periosteum it is a thick and tough sheath that forms an envelope around the bone. It is composed of collagen fibrous tissue. The periosteum contains blood vessels. It also contains bone-forming cells, the osteoblasts, which produce new bone material. Matrix it is composed of a protein called osseum. The haversion canals, a characteristic feature of mammalian bones are present in the matrix. Each haversion canal contains an artery, a vein, a lymph vessel, a nerve and some bone cells. Endosteum it is present outer to the bone marrow cavity. It comprises white fibrous tissue and the bone-forming cells called osteoblast. The latter produces new bone material. Bone marrow it is the vascular, soft pulpy connective tissue found in the bone marrow cavity of long bones like humerus, femur, etc. Bone marrow is of two types. Yellow marrow, rich in fat cells called adipocytes. And red marrow, blood cells are formed in this marrow. In fetus, red marrow occurs in all bones. After birth, it restricts to limited places. Calcified cartilage When matrix of cartilage contains granules of calcium carbonate, the cartilage is called calcified cartilage. The bones can be spongy or compact on the basis of density and texture. A. Spongy, cancellate, bone it contains a network of thin and irregularly longitudinal and transverse bony bars called trabeculae covered by the endosteum. It is found at the ends of long bones, epiphyses. B. Compact, dense, bone it is hard and compact and found in the shaft of long bones. It contains yellow bone marrow and has haversion systems. In a decalcified bone, the inorganic part of the matrix is removed. For dealciphiation, the bone is kept in dilute hydrochloric acid for long hours. This is to study living structures of the bone as it dissolves all the inorganic salts leaving behind only the organic matter. Vascular tissues 
These are modal connective tissues consisting of fluid matrix and free cells. The matrix is without fibers. The vascular tissue helps in the transport of materials from one place to another. Blood. It is a mobile, watery fluid with a slightly salty taste. It is composed of plasma, a fluid matrix, and the cells called blood corpuscles. It is bright red in color when oxygenated and purple when deoxygenated. The volume of blood in an adult is about 5 L. It circulates within the blood vessels in higher animals. It is slightly alkaline, pH 7.4, in nature. Plasma is a yellowish, straw-colored liquid which is composed mainly of water, 92%. About 55% of the total blood volume is plasma. The solid materials in plasma include plasma proteins, nutrients, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and vitamins, hormones, antibodies, enzymes, lactic acid, cholesterol, dissolved gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, mineral salts and waste products, urea, uric acid and creatinine. Functions it helps in transport of substances, provide body immunity, prevent the blood loses, retain fluid in blood, maintain blood pH and conduct heat to skin for dissipation. Blood cells. The blood cells or blood corpuscles forms about 45% of the blood volume. These cells are formed in the bone marrow of the long bones and the lymph nodes. The process of blood cells formation is called hemopoiesis and the tissues where these are formed are called hemopoietic tissues. The blood cells are of following type. Erythrocytes or red blood corpuscles, RBCs, are the most abundant elements in blood. These carry red-colored oxygen-carrying pigment called hemoglobin. They are 7 to 8, XM in diameter. The human RBCs are smaller than the white blood corpuscles. In mammals, they are non-nucleated, biconcave and circular. The formation of erythrocytes is called erythropoiesis. Leukocytes or white blood cells, WBCs, lack hemoglobin and are colorless. They are nucleated with rounded or irregular shape. They can change their shape and are capable of amoeboid movement. Thrombocytes, blood platelets, these are small, colorless, plate-like discs having size of about 2 to 3 pm. Their number ranges between 0.15 to 0.4 million slash mm3 of blood. Their normal lifespan is about a week. No nucleus is visible in these cells. The blood, the blood performs following functions in the animal body. Blood transports oxygen from the respiratory organs to the tissues and carbon dioxide from the tissues to the respiratory organs. It transports nutrients to all parts of the body. Blood maintains the constant body temperature by distributing the heat throughout the body. Lymphocytes and eosinophils produce antitoxins to neutralize the toxins released by the microbes. Blood helps to maintain water balance to a constant level by bringing about constant exchange of water between circulating blood and tissue fluid. It helps to regulate the pH of the body fluids as it contains buffer materials such as proteins and mineral salts. Blood helps in healing of injuries by maintaining necessary supplies for the repair of damaged tissues. It is a mobile connective tissue comprising lymph plasma, fluid, and lymph corpuscles, cells. It is pale yellow in color and its composition is similar to plasma without the plasma proteins. It is present in the vessels called lymph vessels. Lymph is formed of liquid components and formed elements or cells. It contains about 94% water and 6% of organic and inorganic substances. The organic part includes protein, fat droplets, carbohydrates, nitrogenous wastes, and hormones. Lymph performs the following functions in animal body. I. It plays an important role in the defense of the body especially against invading organisms. 2. The digested products of fat digestion enter the lymph vessels present in the villus of the small intestine. 3. Lymph helps to maintain the blood volume by returning the interstitial fluid back to the blood during circulation. 4. The lymph nodes produce lymphocytes. V. It keeps the tissue cells moist. 4. Reticular connective tissues. Tissues consist of star-shaped reticular cells whose protoplasmic process processes joins to form a cellular network. The reticular fibers are present on the reticular cells, composed of a protein called reticulin. The reticular connective tissue is present in the liver, spleen, lymph nodes, thymus, tonsils, bone marrow, and lamina propria of the gut wall. Function this tissue provides strength and support as it forms the supporting framework of many organs. It also helps to bind together the cells of smooth muscles. The reticular cells are phagocytic and forms the defense mechanism of the body.
5. Pigmented Connective Tissue The cells of pigmented connective tissue are irregular and are called pigment cells, chromatophores, or melanophores. These cells contain yellowish-brown, black or blue melanin pigment granules. Melanin is produced by other cells called melanocytes. This tissue is present in the choroid, ciliary body, and iris of the eye and dermis of the human skin. Functions it gives color to the structures. 6. Mucoid connective tissue. This tissue occurs as a fetal or embryonic connective tissue as it is present in the umbilical cord. The mucoid tissue contains a jelly-like substance called Wartzen's jelly and some delicate collagen fibers and primitive type of fibroblasts. It occurs as embryonic connective tissue in the fetus and vitreous humor of the eye. Functions of connective tissue The connective tissue performs following main junctions. I. The connective tissue mainly joins one tissue to another in the organs. 2. The adipose tissue stores fat. 3. The cartilage and bones form a supporting framework for the body. 4. Blood and lymph carry materials from one part to another in the body. V. The cells of connective tissues like macrophages, monocytes, neutrophils ingest bacteria, cell debris, and foreign materials. Thus, they protect and clean the body. 6. The adipose tissue acts as shock absorber around some organs, such as eyeballs and kidneys. It also acts as packing material in various organs. 7. Bone marrow is the source of blood corpuscles. 8. The collagen fibers help in the repair of injured tissues. Note. In old age, the bone marrow of the cranial bones undergo degeneration and is called gelatinous marrow. Bone marrow is a special kind of myeloid, myelogenous, tissue. Prothrombin and fibrinogen are the largest blood proteins and albumins. Are the smallest one. I. Muscular tissue. The striated muscle fibers are multinucleated or syncytial in nature. The cytoplasm, sarcoplasm, of each fiber has a large number of myofibrils, actin and myosin myofibrils, which are tightly packed. Each myofibril shows dark and light bands of stripes alternating with each other. Hence, they are called as striped muscle fibers. 2. Non-striated, smooth, muscle. The non-striated muscles are found in the posterior part of esophagus, stomach, intestine, lungs, urinogenital tract, urinary bladder, blood vessels, iris, ciliary body of eye, dermis of skin, etc. The non-striated muscle consists of long, narrow, spindle-shaped fibers that are generally shorter than the striated muscle fibers. Their size may range from 20, XM, small blood vessels, minus 500, 1M in pregnant uterus. Each non-striated muscle fiber contains a single oval nucleus in its thick middle part. In the cytoplasm, the myofibrils are arranged longitudinally. They are composed of myosin. There is no sarcolemma however, the fiber is enclosed by the plasma membrane. The smooth muscles help in the peristalsis which occurs in the tubular viscera. The autonomic nervous system controls these muscles. Hence, they are not under the control of animals' will. 3. Cardiac Muscles the cardiac muscles are contractile tissues present only in the heart and in the wall of large veins which enter the heart. The cardiac muscle fibers show the characters of both unstriped and striped muscle fibers. The myofibrils have transverse faint dark and light bands which alternate with each other. The cardiac muscle fibers have some special features. I. These muscle fibers are supplied with both central and autonomic nervous system and are not under the will of the animal. 2. These fibers never get fatigue. 3. Blood capillaries penetrate the cardiac muscle fibers, hence they have very rich blood supply. 4. These fibers have the property of contraction, even when they are isolated from the body temporarily. Functions of muscular tissues The muscle tissues perform following important junctions. I. These are involved in the movement of body parts and locomotion of the organism. 2. Muscles are responsible for heartbeat, production of sound and peristalsis in tubular viscera. 3. The muscles support the bones and other structures. 4. Muscles are essential during parturition. The neural tissue is ectodermal in origin. It is specialized to receive stimuli and conducts impulses for controlling and coordinating body functions. It exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing conditions. The neural tissue consists of nerve cells and packing cells. The packing cells are called Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system and neuroglia cells in the central nervous system. The muscle tissue consists of elongated and contractile cells called muscle cells or myocytes. 
Due to their elongated nature, the muscle cells are also called muscle fibers. It develops from mesoderm. The muscle cells are surrounded by connective tissue. Each muscle cell is covered by a membranous sheath called sarcolemma. It consists of plasma membrane and basement membrane. The cytoplasm of a myocyte is called sarcoplasm. The endoplasmic reticulum is called sarcoplasmic reticulum, and the mitochondria are called sarcosomes. The myoglobin keeps the reserve oxygen for immediate supply during muscle activity. It also provides light pinkish color to the muscles. The muscle cells may be uninucleate or multinucleate. The contractile structures of muscle cells are called myofibrils. The myofibrils are made of myofilaments. The myofilaments are of two types, i.e., thicker myosin and thinner actin. The contraction of muscles occurs due to sliding of actin filaments passing over the myosin filaments. Types of muscles The muscles can be grouped into three types based on their structure, location and junction. I. Striated or striped or skeletal or voluntary muscles. 2. Non-striated or unstriped or visceral or smooth or involuntary muscles. 3. Cardiac muscles. 4. Striated muscles. The striated or skeletal muscles form about 40% of total body weight. These muscles are attached and bring about the movement of the various bones of the skeleton, so are called skeletal muscles. The striated muscles give shape to the body and also release heat during contraction. These muscles have huge supply of nerves and blood vessels. Each striated muscle is a long, narrow, cylindrical, unbranched cell. Nucleus. It is a long and cylindrical structure which has a definite sarcolemma. The fibers are uninucleate and the nuclei lie near the center. Neurons. Neurons are the functional unit of neural system. These are excitable cells. A neuron consists of a cell body, cyton, or soma and fine protoplasmic processes called neurites arising from the cell body. I, cyton. It contains neuroplasm, cytoplasm, a spherical nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, ribosomes, lysosomes, fat globules, nissels granules etc. The nissels granules are probably involved in the synthesis of proteins. Neurites. The processes arising from the neurons are called neurites. These are dendrites and an axon. Axon is single, but dendrites may vary from one to several. The dendrites are usually shorter and tapering processes. The axon is usually a long process of uniform thickness. Nerve fibers. The nerve fibers are elongated and slender processes of the neurons, which are formed by ensheathing of axon axons. A space of 15 to 20 nanometers occurs between axilemma and the covering sheath. It is called periaxonal space. Depending upon the covering sheath, nerve fibers are of two types. A. Myelinated nerve fiber. An axon covered by myelin sheath is called myelinated or metallated nerve fiber. The myelin contains lipids, proteins, and water. The metallary sheath serves as an insulating layer, preventing loss of energy of the nerve impulse during its passage along the fiber forward slash, non-myelinated nerve fibers. A non-metallated or non-myelinated fiber consists of an axis cylinder enclosed by neurolemma and connective tissue. It lacks metallary sheath and appears gray in the fresh state. On the basis of function also, the nerve fibers are of two types, a, afferent, sensory, nerve fibers. The afferent nerve fibers carry the nerve impulses from the sense organs to the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. b, efferent, motor, nerve fibers. They carry nerve impulses from the central nervous system to the effector organs, muscles and glands. Nerves A nerve is a complex bundle of nerve fibers enclosed together by a common sheath of connective tissue along with the blood vessels. Each nerve fiber is covered by a thin sheath of connective tissue called endoneurium. A number of nerve fibers, each covered by its own endoneurium, are joined together to form a bundle called fasciculus or fascicle. According to the nature of fibers, nerves can be of following three types. I. Sensory, afferent, nerves. These nerves bring sensory impulses or excitation from different parts of the body and sense organs. 2. Motor, efferent, nerves. These nerves carry message from central nervous system to parts of the body and effector organs to perform their function. 3. Mixed nerves. The nerves contain both sensory and motor fibers. Neuroglia. The neuroglia or glia cells are supporting cells which form a packing around the neurons in the brain, spinal cord and ga ganglia. These cells have different shapes and many processes. 
The neuroglia cells have various roles like myelin formation, transport of materials to neurons, maintenance of ionic balance and phagocytosis. Neurosecretory cells. These are specialized neurons or neuron-like cells, which secrete biologically active substances that are effective in other structures, often at a different site. The neurosecretory cells occur in hypothalamus. They produce hormones called neurohormones. Functions of neural tissue. Neural tissue perform the following functions. I. The neural tissue coordinates and controls the functioning of different parts of the body. 2. The sensation of smell, vision, taste, hearing, pain, pleasure, etc. are performed through the nervous tissue. 3. The neural tissue helps in meditating conscious activities. 4. The information about the changes in various internal structures is provided by nerves. V. It makes us aware about the environment around us. 6. The nervous tissue brings about an appropriate response to each and every stimulus. 7. The tissue is also a seat of experiences, memories, etc. Topic 2. Morphology and Anatomy of Animals. In this topic we will discuss morphology and anatomy of three organisms earthworm, cockroach and frog representing invertebrates and vertebrates at different evolutionary levels to show their organization and functioning. Morphology refers to study of from or externally visible features. The word anatomy is conventionally used for the study of morphology of internal organs in the animals. Earthworm. Earthworm is a reddish-brown terrestrial invertebrate that inhabits the upper layer of the moist soil. During daytime, they live in the burrows made by boring and swallowing the soil. In the gardens, they can be found out by their fecal deposits called as worm castings. The two common Indian species of earthworms are Phoretima and Lumbr Lumbricus. Earthworms inhabit almost all areas over the world, except the Arctic and Antarctic regions. There are about 500 species of Phoretima of which 13 species occur in India. Habitat and Habit Earthworm lives in moist soil rich in humus they are nocturnal animals, i.e., they come out at night for feeding and to mate and sleep during the daytime. Locomotion The earthworm moves by crawling, creeping, in which its body remains on the ground. It moves by muscular contraction and relaxation of the body, which is aided by chitina sidi or chitae. It moves about 15 centimeters per minute. Food The earthworm eats decaying organic matter found in the soil. It is omnivorous. The food is digested in the gut and undigested food along with the soil is passed out through the anus as small pills called worm castings. Breeding. Earthworm is a hermaphrodite, i.e., bisexual or monoecious. It breeds in the rainy season. It is protandrous, i.e., male sex organs mature earlier than the female. Thus, self-fertilization is not possible, only cross-fertilization occurs in them. The copulation occurs when two earthworms closely attach to each other by their ventral surfaces in a way that the head region of one is opposite to the tail region of the other. Then, the two worms separate after the exchange of spermatozoa. Several eggs and spermatozoa are packed in an egg case, the oatheca, cocoon, which is deposited just beneath the surface of ground. About four baby earthworms develops in one cocoon. Regeneration The earthworm has great power of regeneration. If it is cut into two parts, its anterior half develops into tail, but in the posterior half, the head can be formed only if four to six interior segments are removed. Defense Earthworm can defend itself only by ejecting the foul-smelling coelomic fluid through the dorsal pores. Morphology Size, shape and color It has a long, cylindrical body. The anterior end is pointed, but there is no distinct, no distinct head. The posterior end is rounded. The size of an adult worm is about 150 mm long and 3 to 5 mm wide. The dorsal surface is a bit darker than the ventral surface and bears a dark median line. Segmentation The body of earthworm is divided into more than 100 short segments, which are similar, metamers, about 100 to 120 in number. The segments are also divided internally by the septa. This is called true segmentation or metamerism. The first segment is called peristomium. The mouth is present in this segment. A fleshy lobe called prostomium covers the mouth. The segmentation in the first few segments is visible externally without corresponding internal septa. The clitellum is a prominent circular muscular band present in the 14th, 15th and 16th segments. It divides the body into preclitellar, clitellar, and postclitellar regions. 
The female genital pore is a single aperture present mid-ventrally in the 14th segment. The male genital pores are a pair of openings found on the ventral surface of the 18th segment. Two pairs of genital papillae are present in 17th and 19th segments which helps the animal in copulation. In the grooves of 5th to 9th segments, four pairs of spermathecal pores are present ventrolaterally. These are connected to the sperm storing organ called spermatheci. On the dorsal side minute pores are found called dorsal pores through which the coelomic fluid exudes out of the body. This fluid keeps the body surface moist. There are numerous pores called nephridiopores present on the ventral surface of the body. These are the opening of the excretory organs called nephridia that expel out the nitrogenous waste from the body. The last segment is called the anal segment and it bears the anus. Anatomy Body wall The bo body wall of earthworm has four layers, i.e., cuticle, epidermis, musculature, and coelomic epithelium or parietal peritoneum. A. It is a thin, transparent, non-cellular surface layer. The cuticle is secreted by the epidermis and is perforated by numerous minute pores. B. It is the next layer after cuticle, made up of a single layer of columnar epithelium which contains secretory gland cells, i.e., basal cells, sensor or receptor cells, cetidra cells, ceta forming cells, etc. C. C. It is composed of an outer thin layer of circular muscle fibers and an inner thick layer of longitudinal muscle fibers. Contraction of circular muscles makes the body long and thin whereas, the contraction of longitudinal muscle fibers makes the body thick and short. D. It is a thin, membrane-like coelomic epithelium consisting of flattened squamous cells. It protects the internal organs and prevents excessive evaporation. The receptor cells play a vital sensory function. CD and muscles help in locomotion. The excretory matter is passed out through the nephridiopores present in the body wall. Digestive system. A complete alimentary canal is present in the body cavity of earthworm beginning with the mouth in the first segment and ends with the anal opening situated in the last segment. The earthworm swallows the soil and the organic content of the soil is digested. The various regions of earthworm's alimentary canal are following. I. Buccal cavity third segments. 2. Pharynx fourth segment. 3. Esophagus, food pipe, 5-7th segments. 4. Gizzard 8-9th segments. It helps in grinding the food. V. Stomach 10-14th segments. The stomach wall contains calciferous glands to neutralize the humic acid in the soil. 6. Intestine 15th to the last segment where it opens out by anus. 7. Tiflosol between 25-95th segments. There is a prominent enfolding on the dorsal wall called the tiflosol. This enhances the area of absorption of the intestine of the digested food. Respiration. The skin serves as the organ of respiration. Respiration. It is thin, transparent and richly supplied with blood vessels. Respiration through the skin is called cutaneous respiration. Hemoglobin is found dissolved in the blood plasma. Circulatory system. Foretima exhibits closed type of blood vascular system, consisting of blood vessels, capillaries and heart. Due to closed circulatory system, blood is confined to the heart and blood vessels. There are three main median longitudinal blood vessels namely a dorsal vessel, above the alimentary canal, ventral vessel, below the alimentary canal, and a subneural vessel, lying on the ventral side below the nerve cord. In the blood vessel, the blood flows from the posterior to the anterior end. In the ventral and subneural vessel, the flow of blood is from anterior to the posterior end. There are four pairs of hearts, a pair of each lying in 7th, 9th, 12th and 13th segments. All the hearts have muscles and pulsatile walls to pump the blood into the ventral vessel by rhythmical contractions. The backward flow of the blood is prevented by the valves present in the heart. 8. Anus The undigested food is sent out through it. Excretory system. The excretory organs occur as segmentally arranged coiled tubules called nephridia sing nephridium. They are offloing three types. These are present on both the sides of intersegmental septa of segment 15 to the last that opens into intestine. They discharge the waste matter into the gut via septal excretory ducts and superintestinal ducts. Nervous system. Nervous system is basically represented by the ganglia, which are arranged segment-wise on the ventral paired nerve cord. The nerve cord in the anterior region, third and fourth segments, bifurcates laterally, Encircling the pharynx and joins the cerebral ganglia dorsally to form a nerve ring. 
The cerebral ganglia along with other nerves in the ring integrate sensory input, as well as command mu muscular responses of the body. Reproductive system. Earthworm is a hermaphrodite, bisexual, i.e., testes and ovaries are present in the same individual. Ma. Female reproductive system. One pair of ovaries is attached to the intersegmental septum between the 12th and 13th segments. Ovarian funnels are present beneath the ovaries which continue into oviduct. These ducts join together and open on the ventral side as a single female genital pore on the 14th segments. Breeding and fertilization, an earthworm becomes sexually mature when it develops the clitellum. A mutual exchange of sperm occurs between the two worms during mating. Mature sperm, egg cells and nutritive fluid are deposited in the cocoons produced by the gland cells of the clitellum. Fertilization and development occurs within the cocoons, which are deposited in the soil. The eggs are fertilized by the sperms within the cocoons, which then slips off the worm and is deposited in or on the soil. The cocoons hold the worm's embryo. After about three weeks, each cocoon produces two to twenty baby worms. Earthworms' development is direct, i.e., there is no larval stage, and all earthworms lay eggs. Economic importance of earthworms. Merits. Earthworms are useful in several ways for humans. I. Earthworms make the soil porous by digging burrows in the soil. Hence, they are called friends of the fanners. 2. The nitrogenous wastes and other waste products of the earthworms form food for plants. This process of increasing fertility of soil by earthworms is called vermicomposting. 3. Earthworms are used as fish bait for catching fishes. 4. Some tribals in India use earthworms as medicine to cure jaundice, piles, diarrhea, bladder stones, gout, etc. V. In some countries like China, Japan, Australia and Myanmar, earthworms are used as food. 6. The worms reduces both acidity and alkalinity of the soil and create optimum conditions for the plant growth. 7. Earthworms are eaten by frogs, birds, birds, which are useful to man in some ways. Thus, they are an important part of food chain. 8. These are used in scientific studies and dissected in zoological laboratories for academic studies. Demerits. Earthworms may also be harmful in many ways. I. Earthworms may damage young and tender plants by eating them. 2. During rainy season, they make burrows and cause soil erosion. 3. They spoil the playgrounds by digging burrows in them. 4. Some earthworms are intermediate hosts for some parasites, such as tapeworm of chicken and lung nematode of pigs. V. The burrows of earthworms in the banks of irrigation channels sometimes cause leakage of the water. Cockroaches are one of the common insects found in our house. They are brown or black-bodied animals, although bright yellow, red and green-colored cockroaches have also been reported in the tropical regions. In India, two species of cockroaches are found, i.e., Paraplanita americana and Blata orientalis. Locomotion Cockroaches are cursorial insects, i.e., run very fast. They show double mode of locomotion running and flying. The cockroach run on the tarsi of their legs. At a time, three legs are kept on the ground and the other three are carried forward. By repeating this step, the animal moves forward. Cockroach flies by beating the hind limbs with the help of special muscles. They are beaten up and down alternately. Breeding Cockroaches are unisexual. They show sexual dimorphism, i.e., male and female sexes can be seen externally. They are oviparous. The young cockroaches called nymphs resemble the adults in many features. The nymph undergo molting or ectasis in which the casting of older skin takes place. The nymph gradually become adults under the parental care. The cockroaches are tropical and subtropical insects, but they have reached all parts of the world with trading ships. They are good enough to adapt to new habitats. Habitat Cockro Cockroaches inhabit the warm, dark and damp places. They are commonly found in underground drains, kitchens, restaurants, go-downs, storehouses, railway wagons, ships, etc., where food and moisture is available. Habits Cockroaches show some peculiar habits. They are nocturnal, i.e., come out of their hiding places at night to feed. These are omnivorous and eat all types of animals and vegetable v-foods. Morphology The body of cockroaches is dorsoventrally flattened, elongated and bilaterally symmetrical. The adult cockroach is about 34 to 53 millimeters long with wings that extends beyond the tip of the abdomen in males. 
The entire body of cockroach is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton, brown in color, made of tough plates called sclerites. These are formed of chitin, a polysaccharide of acetoglucosamine molecule. The exoskeleton protects the body and provides space for the attachment of muscles. The adjacent sclerites are joined together by thin, soft, flexible arthroidal membranes. Head antenna. The body of cockroach is segmented and divisible into three parts, i.e. head, thorax and abdomen. Head. The head of cockroach is triangular in shape and lies interiorly at right angles to the longitudinal body axis. It is formed by the fusion of six embryonic segments. It is flattened anteroposteriorly and movably articulates with the thorax by a short neck. It is covered by sclerites and bare sense organs, mouth parts and mouth. The sclerites of head are fused to form a compact head capsule called vertex. Sense organs. The sense organs in cockroach includes compound eyes, antenna and fenestri or ocellar spots. I, compound eyes are a pair of large, black, kidney-shaped organs situated dorsoventrally on the head, one on either side. Their surface is marked by a large number of hexagonal areas called facets. The eyes are the organs of sight. 2. Antenna are a pair of long, slender, jointed, tapering J-filaments that articulate, articulates in the antennal socket situated on the fronds, close to the compound eyes. The antenna are organs of touch and smell. They can be moved in all directions to receive the stimuli. Antenna is made up of many segments called potomeres. 3. Fenestri are a pair of small, whitish spots, each lying just above the inner to the antennal socket of its side, they are sensitive to light. Mouth. It is a narrow opening that lies at the base of the preoral cavity. It is bounded by the mouth parts and leads into the pharynx. The mouth parts of cockroach are of biting and chewing type. They also help in swallowing. The mouth parts are attached to the head capsule. The mouth parts include the following structures. A. Labrum is also called upper lip that helps in holding food particles during feeding. B. Mandibles lie on the sides of the mouth just behind the labrum. The two mandibles work against each other in a horizontal plane to crush and cut the food into pieces. C. First maxillae are a pair of maxillae that lie beneath the mandibles, one on either side of the head. D. Second maxillae or labium is also called lower lip. It is a single structure, but it is formed by the fusion of a pair of second maxillae. It lies behind the mouth and forms a type of lower lip. Neck. It is a slender, flexible, can move in all direction, tube articulating the head with the thorax. It is supported by a few ring-like sclerites. Thorax. The thorax forms the middle part of the body. It consists of three segments, the anterior prothorax, the middle mesothorax, and the last metathorax. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of waiting legs. The thorax also contains spiracles for gas exchange. Each thoracic segment is enclosed by four chitinous skeletal sclerites, a dorsal tergum, a ventral sternum, and two lateral pleura. The tergum of the prothorax is called the protergum or pronotum. The tergum of the mesothorax is called mes mesotergum or mesonotum. The tergum of metathorax is termed the metatergum or metanotum. The sterna of all the thoracic segments are largely covered by the legs. The thorax contains three pairs of KGS and two pairs of wings. A. Legs are jointed and a pair is present in each thoracic segment which are three in number. Based on the segment that bears them, legs are prothoracic, mesothoracic and metathoracic or simply prolegs, mesolegs and metalegs. They articulate with their respective segment between the sternum and the pleura. B. Wings These are paired structures, one on the mesothorax, forewings, and another on the metathorax, hindwings. The wings are movable folds of the integument that grow out from the region between the tergum and the pleura near the interior end of the segment. Forewings called tegmina are opaque dark and leathery, used to cover the hindwings when they are at rest. While hindwing are transparent membranous and are used in flight. They bear two thin sheets of cuticle with a framework of branching tubes, the veins or nervures. Abdomen. It is the posterior most and the largest part of the body. It is composed of 10 segments in adults and 11 in the embryo. It is dorsoventrally flattened, broader at the anterior end and narrow posteriorly. Each abdominal segment bears sclerites. Certain segments have spiracles and stink glands. The terminal segments carry appendages and some apertures. An abdominal sclerite is enclosed by four sclerites, a dorsal tergum, one ventral sternum, and two lateral pleura. 
There are 10 turga. The 7th turgum covers the 8th turgum in male and 8th and 9th turga in the female cockroach. The 10th turgum is large and notched in the middle. It projects backwards beyond the body. The abdomen bears 9th sterna, while the 10th one is absent. In male, all the 9 sterna are visible, are visible and in female, only the first 7 can be seen. The abdomen in both male and female cockroaches comprises of 10th segments. In females, the 7th sternum is boat-shaped and together with 8th and 9th sterna forms a genital pouch. In males, genital pouch lies at the hind end of the abdomen. It contains dorsal anus, ventral male genital pore, and gonopophyses. The abdomen of female cockroach is broader than the male cockroach. Male bears a pair of short thread-like anal styles which are absent in females. Abdominal appendages. The abdomen bears small appendages at its hind end only. These appendages are a pair of anal cerci, joint filamentous structures found in both sexes, a pair of anal styles and gonopophysis or external genitalia. Apertures. The abdomen bears following three apertures. A. Anus lies beneath the 10th turgum between the two chitinous plates. These are called podical plates or paraprox. They represent the remains of the 11th segment. B. Genital aperture of the male cockroach lies just below the anus on one of the gonopophyses, and that of female lies on the 8th sternum in the broad pouch. C. Abdominal spiracles are the 8 pair structures. They are smaller than the thoracic spiracles. D. Stink glands A pair of stink gland is present between the 5th and 6th abdominal turga. These glands produce a secretion that gives a characteristic stinky smell. Anatomy The anatomical structure of different parts of cockroach body is described below. Body wall The body wall contains cuticle, epidermis, and basement membrane. The cuticle is impermeable to water because of its thick, non-cellular surface layer. The epidermis consists of a single layer of columnar cells, enclosing some gland cells. Body cavity Cockroaches are coelomate. But, true coelom occurs only in embryonic stage. In adults, it is found in small cavities only around the gonads. The body cavity is filled with hemolymph and is called hemocol. Endoskeleton Cer Certain processes of exoskeleton extend into the body and forms endoskeletal elements. These provide attachment to the muscles and hence called apodemes. Abdomen of cockroach does not have endoskeletal elements. Digestive system. The alimentary canal of cockroach is 6 to 7 centimeters in length. It is divisible into following three parts. A. It is the interior part of the alimentary canal. It is surrounded by the mouth parts. Food is crushed initially by mandibles and mixed with saliva and passed to the short tubular pharynx. The pharynx in turn bends to join a narrow tubular passage called esophagus, which passes through the neck and opens into a sac-like structure called crop, a large pear-shaped sac that stores the food. From crop, the food enters a conical and muscular part called gizzard or proventriculus having, outer layer of thick circular muscles. The gizzard has six large chitinous teeth, formed by inner culide layer and fine bristles in KS grooves. Therefore, it is efficient in grinding of food particles and straining apparatus. Gizzard marks the end of foregut. The whole foregut is lined by cuticle protecting the alimentary canal from rough food particles. Its posterior end projects in the form of a narrow tube into the midgut, called stomatale valve. B. It is a short, narrow tube of uniform diameter, lined by endodermal glandular epithelium. A ring of six to eight blind tubules called gastric or hepatic chica present at the junction of foregut and midgut secrete digestive juices. The midgut is the major organ of digestion and absorption of digested food. The posterior part of the midgut has a sphincter that keeps it closed. C. It is broader than the midgut and is divisible into ilium, colon, and rectum. Ilium is short and narrow bearing short spines. A ring of about 100 to 150 fine yellow-colored thread-like filaments. Malpighian tubules is joined to the beginning of the ilium. Cologne is a wide coiled tube which do not contain spines while, rectum is the last part of the hindgut. The, pap the papillae present in the rectum absorb water and salts from the undigested food. The rectum thus opens outside by anus, which lies below the tenth turgum. Respiratory system. The respiratory system is comprised of a network of blind, blistering white air tubes called tracheae. 
The tracheae are connected to outside by 10 pairs of lateral apertures called spiracles. Two pairs of spiracles occur in thorax and eighth pairs are present in the abdomen. During rest, some of the spiracles are open so that the oxygen can diffuse continuously reaching the body fluid present in the terminal region of the tracheals. Exchange of gases occurs between the living cells and the body fluid. Expansion of abdomen draws fresh air into the tracheal system through stigmata and its contraction expels foul air. Circulatory system. The circulatory system of cockroach is of open type. The blood vessels are poorly developed and blood flows freely in the body cavity which is called hemocole. Visceral organs located in the hemocole are bathed in blood, hemolymph. It contains colorless plasma and corpuscles called hemocytes. Each heart chamber opens into next chamber through a ventricular valve. Each chamber has a pair of incurrent pores called ostia, which possess valvular mechanism to pass the blood only from hemocole to the heart chambers. The heart chambers contract one after the other rapidly. This pushes the blood into the anterior aorta, as well as a few lateral or excurrent arteries. From aorta, blood passes into head sinuses, and then into perivisceral and perineural sinuses. Excretory system. Cockroach is uricotelic, i.e., main excretory product of it is, uric acid. The main excretory organs of cockroach are Malpighian tubules. The tubules are lined by cuboidal, brush-bordered, glandular cells that extract the nitrogenous waste matter from the hemolymph and discharge it into the ileum as uric acid. In rectum, the epithelial lining picks up most of the salts from urine and transport it into the hemolymph. Urine becomes nearly solidified and eliminates along with faces. In addition to this, the fat body, nephrocytes and urcose glands also helps in excretion. Nervous system. The nervous system of cockroach consists of a series of fused, segmentally arranged ganglia joined by paired longitudinal connectives. Three ganglia lie in the thorax and six in the abdomen. The nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body. The head holds a bit of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral part of the body. In the head region, the brain is represented by supraesophageal ganglion, which supplies nerves to antenna and compound eyes. Nerves arise from all the ganglia in the head, thorax and abdomen and innervate various parts in their respective regions. The sense organs in cockroach are antenna, eyes, maxillary palps, labial palps, anal cerci, etc. The compound eyes are situated at the dorsal surface of the head. Each eye consists of about 2,000 hexagonal facets, or amatidia, each capable of forming an image in it. Reproductive system. Cockroaches are dioecious animals, i.e., both the sexes have well-developed reproductive organs. Male reproductive system. It consists of a pair of testes lying one on each lateral side in the fourth to sixth abdominal segments. From each testis arises a thin vas deferens which opens into ejaculatory duct through seminal vesicle. The ejaculatory duct opens into male genopore situated ventral to the anus. A characteristic mushroom-shaped gland is present in the 6th to 7th abdominal segments which functions as an accessory reproductive gland. The external genitalia are represented by male gonopophysis or phalomere, chitinous, chitinous asymmetrical structures surrounding the male gonopore. The sperms are surrounded in the seminal vesicles and are glued together in the form of bundles called spermatophores, which are discharged during copulation. Female Reproductive System the male and female cockroaches come together by their posterior ends. The spermatophores are transferred to the genital chamber of the female. The sperms are liberated from the spermatophores and reaches the left spermatheca slowly. The eggs come from both the ovaries alternately into the common oviduct and passes through the female genital pore into the genital chamber where they are fertilized by the sperms coming from the left spermatheca. The secretion of collateral glands form the egg case of the oatheca plithici. The fertilized eggs are encased in oothece. Oatheca is a dark reddish to blackish brown capsule, about 3-8, 8, 8 mm, long. The oothece are dropped to a suitable surface, usually in a crack or crevice of relatively high humidity near a food source. On an average, females produce 9-10 to 10 oothece, each containing 14-16 to 16 eggs. Economic Importance of Cockroaches Many species of cockroaches are wild and are of no economic importance. A few species thrive in and around human habitat. They damage and destroy household objects such as eatables, clothes, shoes, etc.
They also carry harmful germs of diseases like diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, tuberculosis, etc. The contaminate food items with their smelly excreta. The animals like frogs, toads, lizards, birds and snakes, etc., eat cockroaches. Thus, they form the part of food chain. They are used in laboratories as experimental animals. Distribution. Frogs are widespread in tropical and temperate regions. There are about 2,600 species of frogs all over the world. In India, four species of frogs are mainly found. These are as follows. I. Rana tigrina most widely distributed found all over the world except in countries like Australia, New Zealand and southern South America and largest species of India. 2. 2. Rana cyanoflictus found in Rajasthan, up and MP. 3. Rana malabaricus common in Maharashtra. 4. Rana temporaria common British frog. Habitat and habit. Rana tigrina is the most common frog found in India. It is also called bullfrog because of its large and loud call. It is found in or near freshwater, marshes, ditches, ponds and shallow water bodies. It has various reasons to lead amphibious, amphi 2, bios life, life, such as I. It can respire both through skin and lungs. 2. Frog breeds in water and spends its early life in water. 3. It is unable to drink water and absorbs it through the skin. Hence, it lives near the water. 4. It gets its food from live insects, worms and spiders mosty near the water. The important habits of frog are described below. Feeding. Frog feeds on insects, worms and spiders, etc. It is. Carnivorous. The prey is captured with the help of tongue. 2. Locomotion. The frog usually shows three types of locomotion such as. A. Swimming the body of frog is boat-shaped. During swimming, the hind limbs are alternately folded and strengthened quickly. The backward stroke of hind limbs pushes the body forward and thus, the animal swims. B. Leaping the frog moves on land by leaping. In leaping, the hind limbs are folded and strengthened alternately. When the hind limbs are extended, the frog's body is pushed forward and upward in the air. C. Walking during walking, each limb is lifted, swing forward and placed on the ground again. 3. Breeding. Frogs breed in rainy season. The male frog produce a high-pitched croaking sound to attract the female. The male frog lacks copulatory organs. The sexual embrace in which the eggs and sperms are discharged in water is called amplexus or false copulation. It is a characteristic of amphibians. The shedding of oocytes, eggs, by the female at the end of amplexus is called oviposition. The shed to oocytes and sperms remain embedded in a jelly-like sac called a spawn. Fertilization in frogs is external. The fertilized eggs develop into fish-like tailed larvae, the tadpoles, which respire through gills. It feeds on plant matter, herbivore, and gradually develops into adult frog. 4. Hibernation and Estivation Frog is a cold-blooded, poikilothermic, animal. Its body temperature fluctuates according to its surrounding temperature. To avoid the adverse conditions of environment, frog burrows inside the soil and lies in a state of rest or sleep during summers and winters. The resting condition in winter is called hibernation or winter sleep and the condition of rest in summer is called estivation or summer sleep. V. Defenses. Frogs escape from their enemies by several ways. If chased, they leap away to safe places or jump into water. They can also darken or lighten their green shade to blend with the background and thus prevent easy detection camouflage. This protective coloration is called mimicry. Morphology. The frog has an ovoid, streamlined and slightly flattened body. It is about 10 to 15 centimeters long and shows bilateral symmetry, i.e., its right and left halves are mirror images of each other. The skin of frog is naked, smooth, moist and slippery. A thin film of mucus is secreted by the cutaneous glands present in the skin. The body of frog is divisible into head and trunk. It is to be noted that neck and tail in frog seem to be absent. The head is triangular in shape with a blunt snout. It bears mouth, external nares, eyes, brow spots and ear drums on the upper side and throat on the lower si side. The mouth extends along the entire border of the head. It is bounded by upper and lower jaws. The lower jaw is toothless in frogs. The mouth gets open only during feeding. 
At the top of interior end, the head bears two small apertures called external nares. Air enters and leaves the body through the nares. I. A little behind the nostrils, two large eyes are present, situated along the sides. The eyes are spherical and protruded laterally. Each eye has a thick upper and a thin lower eyelid. The upper part of the lower eyelid is modified into a transparent fold called nictitating membrane. This membrane protects the eye and is pulled over the eyeball when the frog is in water or under the mud and frog can see through it. Coelum The body cavity is a true coelum and large having two pans, a very small pericardial cavity around the heart which contains pericardial fluid and a very large pleuroperitoneal cavity around the other viscera that have coelomic fluid except the kidneys. Both the fluids are watery, colorless and secreted by peritoneum. Digestive system the alimentary canal of frog is short because frogs are carnivores and hence, the length of intestine is reduced. It contains, mouth, buccopharyngeal cavity, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, rectum, and cloaca. A mouth it is present as a wide opening which opens into buccopharyngeal cavity. In frog teeth are not used for chewing, but they prevent the escape of live food. Mouth opens into the buccal cavity that leads to esophagus through pharynx. B. Esophagus It is a narrow, short tube, which continues in large and distended stomach. C. Stomach It helps in converting the food into chyme and secretes gastric juice containing HC1 and proteolytic enzymes. D. Intestine It is a coiled structure continued with the stomach. The intestinal wall has several finger-like folds called villi and microvilli, projecting into its lumen to enhance the surface area of absorption for digest digested food. The first part of small intestine lying parallel to stomach is called duodenum. The duodenum is followed by ileum. Small intestine continues into a wider rectum which opens into a cloaca. A litta behind and below the eye on each side of head, a circular patch of tightly stretched, dark skin is present. This is called tympanic membrane or tympanum or eardrum. It receives sound waves. The floor of the head is occupied by a soft throat. In a male frog, there is a pair of bluish wrinkled patches of skin called vocal sacs. They help in intensifying the croaking sounds. Trunk The trunk contains an anterior portion called thorax and a posterior larger portion called abdomen. A pair of forelimb and hindlimb is attached to the trunk. Each forelimb has an upper arm, a forearm, and a hand. The hand has a wrist, a palm and four digits. Each hindlimb consists of an upper thigh, a middle shank, and a lower foot. The foot has an ankle, a sole, and five digits. The digits are joined together by a fold of skin called web. At the end of the trunk, between the hind legs, there is a circular aperture called cloacal aperture through which feces, urine, and gametes passes out. Anatomy The body cavity of frogs accommodate different organ systems such as digestive, circulatory, respiratory, nervous, excretory, and reproductive systems with well developed structures and functions. Skin. The skin of frog consists of an outer epidermis and inner dermis. Epidermis is the outermost, non-vascular layer made up of stratified epithelium. The innermost layer of epidermis consists of malpighian layer, or stratum germinativum. Dermis layer contains mucous glands and poison glands. The poison glands secrete poisonous fluid which protects the frogs from their enemies. E. Pulmonary respiration occurs by the lungs and is less frequent than the cutaneous cutaneous and buccopharyngeal respiration. It occurs when more oxygen is required. The urinary bladder opens into cloacal chamber through ureter. The cloaca opens externally by a cloacal aperture. This aperture serves both as an anus and as urinogenital pore. The lungs are a pair of elongated, pink-colored sac-like structures present in the upper part of the trunk region, thorax. Air enters through the nostrils into the buccal cavity and then to lungs. The exchange of gases occurs by diffusion in all the three modes of respiration. Circulatory system The circulatory system of frog is well developed and is of closed type. It also has a lymphatic system. The blood vascular system includes the heart, blood and blood vessels. The lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymph channels, and lymph nodes. The digestive glands include gastric glands, intestinal glands, liver, and pancreas. The gastric glands secrete gastric juice, and the intestinal glands secrete intestinal juice, which contains a number of digestive enzymes. The liver produces bile which is temporarily stored in the gallbladder before being released info duodenum.
pancreas is an irregular, elongated gland that produces pancreatic juice containing several digestive enzymes. Digestion of food. The digestion of food takes place by the action of HCI and gastric juices secreted from the walls of stomach. The partially digested food called chyme is passed from stomach to the first part of the intestine, the duodenum. The duodenum receives bile from gallbladder and pancreatic juice from the pancreas through a common bile duct. Bile emulsifies fat and pancreatic juices digest carbohydrates and proteins. Final digestion occurs in the intestine. Digested food is absorbed by the numerous finger-like folds in the inner wall of intestine called villi and microvilli. The undigested solid waste moves into rectum and passes out through clo cloaca. Respiratory system. Frogs respire by three modes of respiration. A. Cutaneous respiration occurs through moist skin of the frog. Frogs respires only by the skin when underwater or deep under the MLTD. B. Buccopharyngeal respiration occurs when the animal is on land or partially immersed in water. It occurs by thin, vascular, moist lining of buccopharyngeal cavity. It is a muscular structure situated in the upper part of body cavity. It has three chambers, i.e., two atria, sing, atrium, and one ventricle. The heart is covered by a membrane called pericardium. There are two accessory chambers in the frog's heart, a tubular truncus arteriosus placed on the ventral side of the right auricle, and a triangular sinus venosus present on the dorsal side of the heart. Left anterior. Sinus venosus receives blood through the major veins called vena cava, and opens into right auricle. The left auricle receives oxygenated blood from the lungs by a common pulmonary vein. The auricles send their blood into ventricle where the blood gets mixed up. The ventricle opens into a sac-like conus arteriosus on the ventral side of the heart. Nervous system. The system for control and coordination is highly evolved in the frog. It includes both nervous system and endocrine system. The nervous system of frogs consists of a central nervous system, a peripheral nervous system, and an autonomic nervous system. It includes brain and spinal cord. The brain is enclosed in a bony structure called cranium or brain box, and the spinal cord lies inside the vertebral column. The brain is classified as forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The forebrain consists of olfactory lobes, paired cerebral hemispheres, and unpaired diencephalon. The midbrain comprises paired optic lobes, and the hindbrain comprises cerebellum and medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata thus, passes out through the foramen magnum, and continues into spinal cord present in the vertebral column. It can contain nerves arising from the central nervous system and extending into the organs of the body. Ten pairs of cranial nerves arises from the brain and nine pairs of spinal nerves supply the trunk and limb regions. It consists of sympathetic nervous system of two ganglionic chains and parasympathetic nervous system of isolated ganglia in the viscera. The autonomic nervous system controls the functions of organs that are not under the voluntary control. Sense organs. The frogs have different types of sense organs such J as organs of touch, sensory papillae, taste, taste buds, smell, nasal epithelium, vision, eyes, and hearing, tympanum with internal ears. Out of these, eyes and ears are well-organized structures and the rest are cellular aggregations around the nerve endings. Eyes in a frog are a pair of spherical structures situated in the orbit present in the skull. These are simple eyes. External ear is absent in frogs and only tympanum can be seen externally. The ear is an organ of hearing as well as balancing, equilibrium. Special venous connection between liver and intestine, as well as the kidney and lower parts of the body are present in frogs. The former is called hepatic portal system and the latter is called renal portal system. The blood vessels found in frogs are arteries, arterioles, veins, venules, and blood capillaries. Arteries carry blood from the heart to different body parts. Veins bring blood from different body parts to the heart. Arteries further divide to form arterioles. The arterioles branch out to form capillaries, which further unite to form venules. The venules thus join to form veins, which have valves to prevent backflow of the blood. The blood is composed of plasma and blood cells. The blood cells are RBCs, red blood cells, or erythrocytes, WBCs, white blood cells, or leukocytes, and platelets. RBCs are nucleated and contain red-colored pigment namely hemoglobin. The lymphatic system comprises of lymph ves vessels, lymphatic channels, and lymph. Lymph is a mobile connective tissue filtered out from the blood through capillaries. It contains plasma and white corpuscles and lacks red blood cells. 
Lymph in the body always flows in following direction lymph capillaries lymph sinus lymph hearts veins. Excretory system. The elimination of nitrogenous wastes is carried out by a well-developed excretory system. The excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, ureters, cloaca, and urinary bladder. The kidneys are compact, dark red and bean-like structure, situated little posterior in the body cavity on both sides of vertebral column. Each kidney is composed of several structural and functional units called uriniferous tubules or nephrons. Each nephron is the structural and functional unit of kidney. The Bowman's capsule leads into a coiled, urinary tubule. The urinary tubule opens into transverse collecting tubules, which ultimately communicate with the ureter or urinogenital duct. In females, the ureters and oviduct open separately into the cloaca. The thin-walled urinary bladder is present ventral to the rectum which also opens in the cloaca. The frog excretes urea and thus is a ureotelic animal. The excretory wastes are carried by blood into the kidney where these are separated and excreted. Endocrine system. The chemical coordination of various organs of the body is carried out by hormones, which are secreted by the endocrine, endocrine glands. The prominent endocrine glands found in the frog are pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pineal body, pancreatic islets, adrenals and gonads. Skeletal system. In frog exoskeleton is absent. The endoskeleton has two parts. I. Axial skeleton that includes skull located in the head and vertebral column situated in the trunk. Appendicular skeleton includes limb bones in the arms and legs and girdles, pectoral and pelvic, that connects the limb bones with vertebral column. The skull consists of cranium, sense capsules and jaws. Vertebral column consists of nine ring-like vertebrae and a long uristyle. Each forelimb contains many bones namely, a humerus in the upper arm, a radio ulna in the forearm, carpals in the wrist, metacarpals in the palm and phalanges in the fingers. Each hind limb consists of many bones namely, a femur in the thigh, a tibiofibula in the shank, tarsals in the ankle, metatarsals in the instep and phalanges in the toes. Frogs have well-organized male and female reproductive system. It shows sexual dimorphism. Maxillary orbital cavity quadratojugal parotic phalanges occipital lateral carpus metacarpus uristyle. Hyam. Ischium. Calcanium. Talus. It includes a pair of yellowish, ovoid testes which are found adhered to the upper part of the kidneys by a double fold of peritoneum called mazorchium. From testes, 10 to 12 vas afferentia arises. They enter the kidneys on their side and open into bitters canal. The urinogenital duct comes out of the kidneys and opens into the cloaca. The cloaca is a small, median chamber that is used to pass fecal matter, urine and sperm to the exterior. It consists of a pair of ovaries situated near the kidneys, and there is no functional connection with kidneys. A pair of long oviducts from ovaries opens into the cloaca. Ovaries release about 2,500 to 300 eggs at a time. The eggs are released in water, so, the fertilization is external. Development is indirect. A fish-like tailed larva called tadpole is formed. The tadpole undergoes metamorphosis to form an adult in about three months. Frog is a useful animal for humans in following ways. I. It feeds on insects which destroy crops and frogs eat up mosquitoes, which are the carriers of various diseases. 2. The muscles of legs of frogs are used as food in some parts of India and many other countries. 3. Baby frogs are used as fish baits, any substance which is used to attract or catch fish. 4. Frogs are used for researches in medical science and pharmacology. V. They help to maintain ecological balance by forming an important part of food chain. So here the structural organization in animals ends. Please make sure you like and subscribe.